little astronaut koozie <laughs> uh, with my with my wine. I'm sorry, Leia. Just immediately me going like that was yeah, enough. We decided or... to let the dogs in. Normally they're oh, who let out. the dogs in? Who? who? My who? Did. My All right. Anyway, did. welcome to the Hangover, <laughs> Sir Isaac Newton style. And Jack is on drink two. He has hot apple cider with a cinnamon candy cane, both oh, festive and timely. Wow. Yeah, but, but, that sounds good. But my second drink has more of a kick than this. First you had one drink, drink, yes. It's been sitting. What about second drink? Do we have to get a drink for that? It's a hangover. No, it's a hangover. Count. We don't do the drinking rules in the hangover, but feel free to All right, I do have a question before we get into rockets, Brandon. <gasps> That's right, rockets. <laughs> oh, I, I have a statement. Well, oh, yes. another, well, it's more of a comment than a question. <laughs> I, I have a, a, a fun fact about Newton that I did not know about. Oh, yeah, okay, until Newton fun doing facts. Doing research. So, Newton fun facts. Um, in optics, there was an obscure little thing where it basically, um, you have a beam of light. So I guess it's not really obscure, but um, a beam of light comes in uh-huh. and he makes it bigger. Um, so yeah. there was a way to make that beam bigger. Ooh. Okay. It's a fun thought experiment. Yeah. Yeah. So Wait. he has a way of doing it. How do he make the beam bigger? Uh, it's, I don't know. Imagination. He does it. So um, <laughs> combination of lenses and different things like that. Okay. And so um, guess where it shows up? In modern times, guess where it shows up? It shows up in modern times? Yes. A bigger light beam? Yes. Oh, oh. Is it Death Star? <laughs> Close, close. Ooh. You're kind of on the right track. Oh. Right, let's think. Let's think about this. Star killer let's, base. Let, let, what? You're on the. Let's, right. let's, let's, let's think about lasers. This. So we're on the right lasers. Track. Lasers. Lasers. What does laser stand for? Light. Wait. Amplitude. Wait. I'm. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Lasers stands for something. Mm-hmm. It's yes. not just a word. It's an acronym. Yeah. It's not an acronym. It's initialism. Oh God! Fuck off with your grammar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a thing that means it has a. Yes, yeah, light, light, and it's an L dot A dot. I didn't know. Yeah, so yeah, it stands for something. That's why. That's why you have lasers and masers. Masers are masers. What are masers? What is happening right now? Don't even get it started on blazers. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know quasars. Oh, yeah, no See, this is why I don't want you guys in here. <laughs> Let her get her little candy. <laughs> She's three times. Anyway, so we we we, we are what was going on with masers? What are those? Yeah, what is a fucking maser? It's with muons. Mu- <sighs> it's a cow laser. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what she said. Utter, utters masers. Mm. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. It's not muons. I don't know why. I'm, it's microwave. I think it's there. Microwave. We go. Oh. Okay. Microwaves. Yeah, it's not. Muons. So it's microwave lasers. No, I bet you could do it in muons, but it's microwaves. I don't know. CERN, why get on it. Muons. CERN, make those muon lasers. I really mean, like the I idea of cow fantastic. lasers. Cow lasers. <laughs> my, my joke. I just said went unappreciated, but I'm going to say it again. That would be otherly fantastic. <laughs> yes, okay, all right, all right. We don't drink in this, but and this button doesn't work for this. Uh, oh, that's this thing, so. oh, shit. Yeah, that no. That's a bad news. All right, so, Brandon, get into rockets. However, though, I'm sorry, I'm um, at lasers, the end of rockets, initialism. I do want to know, like, favorite scientist. Oh. So Ooh. this gives you time to think about it. Are you just okay. asking Brandon? Um, so with everybody, everybody, everybody. this is a brand, and, oh. but I, unlike Brandon, I, I will give the, my answer. I don't have the breadth of scientific knowledge. <laughs> All right. Take us away on rockets, All right. Brandon. All right. So with rockets, you had mentioned during the episode uh, that NASA still uses like Galileo Newtonian physics to get to the planets. Yes. And that's true. And they also only use, I think it's like five or maybe six digits of pi to get like Who within a meter of pie? orbits. Yeah, um, and that's because you don't need like the, the quantum mechanics to understand the physics of gravity of the planets. So relativity, because those are big yeah. scale things. You don't need quantum for the big. Yeah. You need quantum uh-huh. for the littles. Yeah, yeah, so so you really don't need Einstein to figure out the orbits of the planets or how to send okay. Juno to get to Jupiter fuck and the orbit that planet. Yeah, fuck off, Einstein. <laughs> you don't need Einstein to get to Pluto with New Horizons. All you need is a dude that lived four hundred years ago. 
That's so they still crazy. use Newton's math just to get to the planets yeah. and have a satellite orbits and park around the celestial object. Well, isn't it That's isn't it Mercury that orbits based on Newtonian physics? And no, 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 uh, no uh, that, it's reversed. Yeah. Okay, I always so, reverse it. All right, so I with Mercury, it. I almost included Mercury. Oh. So you look at yeah, Mercury. Yeah, that's a big one. Mercury it's is close one. to the sun, so it feels more the sun's gravity. Yeah. And so its orbit, where it, it's not a, it's not a closed orbit. So it orbit its orbit precesses around the sun. Mm -hmm. So if you use Newtonian physics, you get halfway to. Explaining oh, so why. you need Einstein. So you physics. need Einstein. So, okay. so I fuck it up. I fuck it up in no, my head. I always miss so, it. So that was a big thing for. It was a big thing for three hundred years. Um, why? Why Mercury? Why does Newtonian physics not? So we know it's incomplete. Uh -huh. Einstein answers it precisely. Uh, Einstein's like, I got this. And, on my beer. And again, again, this is one of those moments where, for a moment. For a moment, mm -hmm. it, it it was either Einstein and or uh -huh. Einstein's, because Einstein had somebody help him with the math. Let's go back in time and have Einstein and Newton have a tea party. Yes. Well, it ha well, happened happens. on the Enterprise. Well, hey. I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, where Einstein knows that his idea is correct. And, I mean, like like Brandon said in the, in the main episode... There is a moment where mm -hmm. all the scientists of NIF... Where you know you're right and no one you else know knows you're about right. you, and how even, right you are. And even, I'm going to say, the scientists that we don't know. Because they all have to do dissertations. So they all have this data mm -hmm. that they have to defend. Mm -hmm. And for a moment, they're the only person in the entire world. In the entire history of the world yes. that knows what they know. I mean, as far as we know, the history of the cosmos. Well, we don't know that because there's other... That's, that's why I said as far as we know. Yeah, I mean, but we don't know anything. I mean, think about it. <laughs> Every scientist, Galileo, looking at Jupiter. Galileo, looking at looking at Saturn and not understanding it's the ears. rings. It's ears. It's ears. How do you think... Do you think Aristotle would take the news that he was wrong about pretty much everything well? Well, it depends. Yeah, you know, that's what they am sure. <laughs> it depends. How how married are you to, um, you know, the principles of science where, and you know, we don't evidence know. of facts? We don't know his personality. So that's no. my that's my hypothetical question is how well would he take it? Is he an ego hound? Where Young guy? Would older take guy. It well? Older guy? Probably not as well. Well, yeah. Because the older you get, the more married. There, there's right. a reason why um, physicists older. that get Nobel well, prizes get, yes. get. are typically <laughs> that. And, I'm, I'm not going to say, okay, so Peter Hick. Uh, okay. well, finish the thought, Mike. Finish the thought of the Nobel Prize. Okay, so with Nobel Prizes, the people that get the Nobel Prizes, mm -hmm. it's usually done mm -hmm. for work that they've done in their 20s and 30s. Oh, right, right. It's, so, it's usually like 27, right? 26, yeah, 27? The, yeah. So yeah. when you hit the age of, I think it was like 28, mm -hmm. your brain, quote unquote, starts to it harden. It dies. It dies. It does. Yeah. And so what, what they found is, is that right around the age of 28, uh -huh. people get married to preconceived ideas, and they don't want to let go of them. Einstein, perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Einstein comes up with relativity. He comes up with um, basically a quantum physics paper. He comes up with general theory of relativity, and he gets married to the idea that um, general theory of relativity and quantum um, and all these other forces can be combined with general theory of relativity. They can't. Um, and he then spends the rest of his life working on that. And he just can't let it Yeah, go. it's it's just something about, you know, children with the open minds and the... Uh, That's exactly what it was described it's like, as. It's like when, you know, you lose the ability to have an imaginary friend when you grow up. At, well, some people, most I was going to say, wait a minute. Not everybody. but uh, you, She didn't mean you, or <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it's like it's like that. Yeah. So you, you get, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So you have the ability um, 
early on to your brain is malleable. You're able to mm-hmm. um, think outside the box. Think more. outside of the box, and then you new, get stuck in the box. New ideas, but in the get box. Older, <laughs> your ideas. And, you know, to be fair, to be fair, that that is why older people become more, more conservative. As I'm not going to say Republican, yeah. but they become conservative. more conservative right. as they grow older. These I, days I, 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 think, I think our generation's list will prove that very wrong. <laughs> I, I think we so. will prove it very I, correctly. I have become, <laughs> for me personally, I have become more liberal. More liberal. Um, like I've become more almost, liberal too, I think, almost actually. Almost militant liberal. It's, Ooh, um, you've gone the opposite side. I've gone the opposite. Where... Opposite spectrum. Thank you, okay. Isaac Newton, for that word. I, and that's another thing I didn't know that Newton no. came up with. He didn't. How do you invent words? How do you uh, invent well, words? Well, but here's the thing, though. Let me go ask Webster. You, you split light. TikTok? You split light. <laughs> you have to come up with, this is what I'm seeing. I know, but just like, ah, to come uh, up with a word like spectrum. And really quick to talk about making up words. Uh, do you know one stop of the reason, authors? Stop the, 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 that's, the, your, the, and that's an acupuncture point right there. And I'm sorry, I was looking at Jack's... Uh, Jack's go, go ahead, Brandon, go ahead. Like the author digest. of the Oxford Dictionary in the 60s, do you know who that was? No, of course not, but only you will. J.R.R. Tolkien. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh, speaking of Tolkien, so the, um, um, on Plex, you know, the, the anime. Oh, yes, Hobbit. yes, 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 yes. Were you watching that? No. No, 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 no. But I was looking through, uh, I, but I was going to, but I, but we haven't yet. So, because we were doing Oppenheimer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. I was flipping through all the voices. Um, uh-huh. Because it's animated, right? Yes. So and they showed a picture of Tolkien as, as a, a young, young man. guy. Yes, and he commented like, "Oh, I have never seen him as a young man until I saw his picture that on." Picture. Yeah, um, that that for gentleman. Yes, and so it's always been of him um, as that distinguished gentleman. Yes, um, with a older and like, Putin, "Hey guys, can you guys go play elsewhere?" Yeah, anyway, and so. Uh, yeah, it was like okay, all right. That's what Tolkien looked like. Yeah, um, yeah. It was it was fun. All right. So my question is, favorite scientist? I'll even let you have three because I've, I have. I've three. been thinking about this for the last ten minutes. Okay, I've um, I've thought about it briefly, and I would like what? to say just out what comes to my head, what came to my head initially. I'm gonna go with what came to my head okay. initially, okay. Okay. and my what came to my head initially is Marie Curie. Oh, and, yeah, that's solid. a good one. And that is because. Ooh. That she, as a woman, she dedicated her life to studying things that ended up killing her. Oh, yeah, that's dedication right there. Um, that because she didn't know they would end up killing her because we didn't know about radiation and all that shit. Uh, and so that is what came to my head is and just seeing pictures of Marie Curie and I'm like, I identify with you. Yeah, like just what? not your lot, not your brain because I don't have that, but just like yeah, you're a hardworking working woman who you know. Uh, uh, ended up dying have, for her work. Have, have you guys ever read *The Sea Around Us* by Rachel Carson? No. <laughs> really? So she's one. Of, she is like one of the original oceanographers there, um, and just her science and contributions to oceanography is phenomenal. And and plus, uh, she was a fantastic uh, a public communicator. So oh. if you have the chance, I strongly recommend reading *The Sea Around Us*. Okay. *Sea Around Us*. Okay. Um, yeah. Send it to us in text so yes. I can get yep. it. And remember, uh, also yeah. I think of the fa- the uh, obviously the famous uh, Hedy Lamar because it is the typical you know beautiful beautiful woman who yeah. happens to be a Hollywood actress but is actually doing science on the side and gave us That's Wi-Fi right. to this day. Yeah, and yeah. is unknown f- for that I, ability. Yeah. for that. I can, see, I can see that connection. Smarts. <laughs> Not here in Oak Ridge. It's a pull, little issue on here. Pull, pull the Liz look, too, with the... <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we, we... Yeah, Liz and I get each other. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, um, yeah, okay. All right, Brandon, you? 
So, of course, you know my go-to is William and Caroline Herschel. I love yes. the Herschels. If any of you guys ever take them for the shot, I will disown you and never do the okay, shot again. Okay, we are waiting for you to do that yeah. as a shot. I, I, because I, can, I can't just willy-nilly do it. I need yes. to prepare and then do it phenomenally. It needs to be done correctly. yourself and do it. You know, I, maybe just a whole podcast episode. I maybe mean, a whole show we episode. We could do a whole show on them. Yeah, you can also okay. do a shot on them. All right, and anyway. Do a whole show on anyway. Them. Anyway, okay. Yeah. Herschel's. <laughs> I, do, I do love the Herschel's, um, of course, because... You know who we are. We love disseminating to the general public, and you got to put in that case uh, one of the first, if not the greatest, science communicator out there in the Carl Sagan, because he was not just a communicator; he was a scientist as yeah. well. And he, yeah. so he when, when, the when he, yeah, to so when, living room. most uh, it was the most expensive series t- to that time. Uh, but if you recall, I'm sure you do. Uh, when he began publicizing his science, he was frowned upon by the scientific community because talking to the public was not something a scientist did during right. that time. It's dumb. Yes, it's very dumb. It's dumb. Uh, so he, he was like one of the first people to step out and make science popular. So just for that alone, he became yeah. one of my favorites. Because well. then, because then, on top of Sagan's shoulders, you had like the Bill Nyes and the oh, yeah. you know the and you know, Bill Nye, Sisons and the Bill Nye has a great and... yeah. So Bill Nye was actually a student of Sagan. Yeah, wow. yeah. Wasn't Tyson? No, Tyson. It was Tyson. Uh, Bill Nye. What was Bill Nye's story of Sagan? I mean, I feel like you're I'm right. Sorry. So it was Tyson that was that was a student of Sagan. I'm sure each other knew. Oh, the Tyson probably or Nye's connection is probably good, has to do with the Planetary Society, maybe. Right, oh, and then yeah, yeah. and then to bring it home here, um, Nye, Bill Nye's boss. Uh, is Jim Bell, who was my professor at ASU. Oh. Yes. And yes. he wrote um, the, he wrote Postcards to Mars, right? So he's yeah. got Postcards a, to Mars yes. and also um, a, a, a little biography about the Voyager missions because he was an intern and later employee during Voyager, and it's such a fun read. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. I guess I will. Clearly Einstein. Okay. Yeah, of course. Right. And by the way, when we say favorite scientists based on science uh-huh. and not their personal lives. Oh, okay. okay. Because but, a lot of people are. Are you thinking is, is, about is that, personal lives? Is that the next person coming up? I, I wasn't thinking about personal no, 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 lives no, 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 because no. I wasn't thinking about no. personal lives because. Lay out. Go, go. All I right. think I have a feeling who's coming next up. Well, actually, you're going to be surprised. Oh, will it's I? not okay. who you think it is. Uh, okay. Zwicky is not going to show up. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, thinking Zwicky. I wasn't Hello. thinking Zwicky. I wasn't thinking Zwicky. I wasn't thinking Zwicky. Go I'm for thinking it. I'm thinking that with other particles. <laughs> All right. So, number two in the list. Um, uh, Richard Feynman. Oh, there we go. That's what I was thinking of. Get those bongos Disregarding out, Disregarding your personal life. Get those bongos yes. out. I thought it was going to be Vera Rubin. Just number three. You're very Vera Rubin. passionate about Vera Rubin. <laughs> Those are my three. Okay. Um, Excellent. And I actually, I would actually put Vera Rubin t- number two. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I love Einstein because Einstein. Since Einstein, I guess. Yeah. Well, we know he has great bagels. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just took everything and turned it on its head. Yeah. I mean, you could also say the same Max Planck and Neil right. Bohr. Yeah. And right. you know. Schrodinger and all, all right, of these the, people. I mean, I love cats. Um, so you don't like Schrodinger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Feynman is was one. Feynman was just he was he was basically a bohemian. Yeah, he liked the bongos. He liked the bongos. <laughs> he would mm. tell you all up and down about going to strip clubs and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Look, he, we're not talking about personal lives because no. Um, with the Challenger disaster, uh-huh. with the with the openings, yeah. uh, he was part of the commission with it, and there was all. At, this was at a fucking news conference. He oh, he called them out. He called them out. So there's this whole and, debate about the O ring and all this kind of stuff. And he, and while this is all going on, he took a little piece of the O ring that he had, put it in ice water. During the conference. During the conference. Live. During the so conference. This is this better is than the fucking bullshit snowball thing that the guy brought to conference that was yeah. about climate change. The Oklahoma yes. representative and all that. Yeah. 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 Um, and so they just keep talking. They keep. Mm-hmm. He, all right. He measured it prior to putting in uh-huh. ice because uh-huh. the debate was it will shrink. Oh. It won't shrink. Blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. And so he threw it in his ice water. He, he pulled it out after a while, measured it smaller, and just hands down. And went, hey, 
Hey, shrinks. motherfuckers, this is science. It yeah. shrinks. Here's the data right in front of your eyes. <sighs> That's pretty. That's pretty. A, so, that's a baller move to do at a press conference. But I say. you know, Vera Rubin, and and I know that I have said that you know she deserves the Nobel Prize. She did, <laughs> but she was so humble about not getting it. Um, because women have to be. Uh, that's true. But if there's anybody that okay, so in the in the main podcast we talked about Newton. Standing on the shoulders of giants. How, how many women have been there in the shadows? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holding, nice. holding up the giants. That we don't know about. Because... Holding up the giants. Vera Rubin, though, she... I mean, she basically said the same thing. She was very, um, you know, appreciative what, just to be in the same her, conversation. What, year, what is her year of contemporary... 1970. She yeah. worked for the yeah. Harvard um, Observatory, uh, the Center, Harvard Center for Astrophysics. And what she did was um, she measured... Mm-hmm. All right, so in the 1940s, um, uh, Fritz Wicke, who everybody thought was going to be on the list, um, was... <laughs> I mean, he's an asshole, but... He is an asshole. He's a circular bastard. He's a circular <laughs> bastard. <laughs> well done. Yes. yes. Um, he, he basically... Um, said that there's this thing called dark matter. Vera Rubin proved it. Yeah. Hell um, yeah. And um, it's called a vagina. Well, yeah. So it's a mystery. You don't know how they work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes up seventy five percent of the universe. We don't understand how it works. True. Hashtag true. Um. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it was it. She proved it, mm-hmm. and she was just very humble about mm-hmm. not being, um, yeah. you know, in the uh, yeah. that that she should have gotten Nobel Prize because yeah, she had to. But be. she because she had to be, but she deserved it, and 100%. And, and it's not me. It's not just me that says that she deserved. It. There's a whole bunch of people, <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of people that are pissed off. Because um, she died and she never got yeah. that recognition. There should be a posthumous. Maybe they don't have to do the cash money award for it, but just a posthumous it's very honorary. Cash money, though. Just a posthumous, you know. Hey, yeah. here's an honorary for you know. But and, anyway, and, and and speaking of that as well, I made an omission in my favorite scientist. I did not even give a mention to one of my favorites, Annie Jump Cannon. Annie How Jump Cannon. That? How dare I not mention Annie? Badass and you know, I think I think we all. The, I mean, putting three, saying three, is really, is just such a. I mean, we're shackling ourselves with it. And well, I so, mean, there's so many great minds that so have come. Many great minds. And, you know, yeah, and, and what? Uh, well, just speaking of my earlier comment about how, but how many women could have contributed that we don't know. Like, think about just in the ancient Greek period where how many, because because the ancient All Greeks right. were the first documented society to think aside from, a, like, a, 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 the gods do this kind of a well, reasoning. The Babylons as well. Uh, okay, but, but, like, the first that really... <laughs> were put in pen to paper, pencil, uh, papyrus, uh, whatever they used to write with, um, you know, to, to look at the world and let's figure out the natural order of things, order yeah. of things versus, oh, you know, a, a God does this, a God does that, we need to do this because a God does this, and, and mean like, hey, what what is actually kind of happening? It's the, it's the preamble to scientific thought by, a, mm-hmm. a, you know, many, many years, you know, how many then, you know, women during that society were also having their own, you know, thoughts of things or, or even before that or whatever, that then never could voice those or write them down or whatever. Right. Just imagine how you know, far we would be if women voices were If there valued. was equity in society. Can't have that kind of thing. <laughs> But, you know, so I just wonder about those things of, like, you know, how many people, men or women, or theys or thems, 
same thing, uh, has there been throughout history that have had these thoughts but did not have the means and, to communicate them or write them down right. or, a, or, how, or d- and disseminate a, along, them? And along the same lines, I'm sure you could actually correct the quote for me. Uh, I, I don't know if it's... Oh, it was one of those philosophers, Bernard... Uh, Bertrand Russell? Bertrand Russell, yeah. He had, he had I think it was Bertrand Russell, had the quote... Um, and I don't know the exact quote, but I am less concerned about how many Einsteins there have been as to how many Einsteins have died in a, a plantation field. Yeah. Right, exactly. exactly. I mean, I mean, there's so many human beings that have existed from the beginning of, of human evolution. We're being stared at by a dog. That's why I see this yeah. a little bit. This girl, this Leia. Uh, you know that have that have had thoughts uh, that are much larger than humanity that are much, <sighs> that are of the workings of the world, the universe, mm-hmm. etc. Whether it's just plants or how animals work, whatever. How many minds have not been able to have been heard throughout history because of whatever X, Y, and Z circumstance? You know, right. it, it's just, it's just like, it's just like, I always wonder, and that's why, you know, I'm, it's like, like I, I, like I wish time travel could be possible just to go back, even though there's no way you could possibly go back to pinpoint anybody, but just to like, like, what were the thoughts that just various people have had throughout time that were of these, of this nature, you know, mm-hmm. that could have revolutionize things earlier or yeah, it's you know it's something that you can't you can't there's no answer to I, obviously I, there's no whatever but it's just it's just a fascinating there, there, thought to a, me there's a movie that you guys should watch tonight it's called rosencrantz and guildenstern are dead oh. have, have, you, have you seen it no i, I have not i don't think so no. <gasps> you should actually you, you would absolutely love it to death so it's rosencrantz and guildenstern from hamlet and they have their own side adventures during the play and they get so incredibly close to all these great scientific discoveries and just get it wrong just enough. Just miss it? Oh, no. God. See, this is why I love the Star Trek universe. And I hate money. I hate money. Yeah, because, we all hate money. Well, Except for some of us love money. I like you know, I have it. But the thing the is... The people who love money uh, could do a lot with in, it. In today's society, in today's yeah. world, which has been the world for millennia... Um, you have to have money to be able to do anything. eat, have a roof over your head, mm-hmm. you know, feed the dogs that constantly want to Go get ahead. in a scene, um, and all that kind of stuff. But um, my mom used to like to say uh, money is the root of all evil, uh-huh. which is really ironic. But anyway, um, money is the root of all evil, and but it's true. M- money leads to um, it, it basically... Classes. It, it creates it a hierarchy. Leads, it, it creates, creates a, a hierarchy. Money leads to hate. Hate <laughs> leads to suffering. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which leads oh. to the dark side, right? And so it um, it leads to people having to work in a field mm-hmm. and not be able to concentrate on um, you know the betterment of humanity and. That's why I love the Star Trek universe mm-hmm. because money has been gotten rid of, mm-hmm. and now it's all people about just, advancing humanity. People can just do what they want. Well, but but passionate. but you know the thing is though is sure that first generation is going to be hedonistic because we get. But to what do about what about the next, the next generation? generation? What about, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, but I would be in that. That hedonistic first generation just fucking like yeah. I mean to be to be fair, I would too. <laughs> but you know the thing is though, is you do then have the luxury to start thinking about. Yeah, I mean all these people that are like forced into a job or prof- you know whatever yeah. because they need to survive, but you know they can- and then they can't you know follow their passion or. Or mm-hmm. spend the time thinking of things like inventing a new fucking mathematical system. Yeah. Because is there's it, a play going on. As much as I love to play video games, <laughs> as much as I love to play video games, mm-hmm. that's in this new society of no money where I don't have to work to mm-hmm. get money so I can have a roof over my head. Mm-hmm. 
Um, video games are going to get old quickly. Oh, I was like, how many times would you become Elden Lord? Oh, I will be Elden Lord <laughs> about, you know, ten times, and then be like, okay. And then the expansion comes out. <laughs> All right, but you know what? My mom says, "Weren't I?" I know we gotta. You have a time. I, I have yeah. to go, but you guys can continue. Uh, on. My mom says, "Weren't there matriarchal societies in Africa and without certain religions, which are patriarchal?" Well, let me just say, I'll just comment on this: that a lot of early societies were matriarch matriarchal, uh, and then things just turned into the patriarchy. So that's where we are today. But I anyway. just, I, I just watched Barbie, uh, like. One night ago, yeah, and I just want to say the society really runs off men and horses. You're just Ken. Well, we, Ken we watched. I I can't remember the name of it. I don't um, remember. But no, no, it wasn't. It, <laughs> it's a thing on Max where we can only watch one episode oh. at a time. Um, oh God, about the IBS. Yes. Oh. The love independent. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's some cult Baptist religion thing that oh. abuses and uh, oh, uh, women. My. Uh, I we can only do one at a time because yeah, it's just too hard it's to watch. Too much. Much. But anyway, I have to go. Yes, uh, we gotta cut this thing over because Mike has a phone date with his daughter, and um, and I gotta pee. And I got ribs in the crock pot and the oven. Oh, it's so good <laughs> tonight's good eating. Tonight is thanks for joining us, guys. Eating. Yes. Um, again, we will not be here in two weeks on the seventeenth. On the seventeenth, but join us on the thirty-first where we're gonna talk the- about. Yes, that is New the Year's Eve, where we're going to talk about January high in the sky. Woo! <laughs> All right. I guess. Stay safe, stay healthy. And think about um, science. And, you know, go enjoy the universe. Cheers, everybody. Uh-huh.